I once got locked in a hotel bathroom with no help in sight. And if you want to know how I got out, you have to watch this whole sermon. No fast forwarding. But it was June of last year when Methodist pastors and church members all gather for our annual conference in Greenville. I was staying in a hotel that, let's just say, had seen better days. My husband Jordan wasn't set to join me for another 24 hours, so I had the room all to myself, and I had to go to the bathroom. On my way to the bathroom, I noticed that the little latch bolt faceplate thingy was askew, and so I righted it before closing the door. Word to the wise, you don't really need to close the door when it's just you in the room. But when I tried to exit, the door wouldn't open. Somehow it had gotten stuck. It was, it was locked or jammed, and no matter how hard I tugged, the door wouldn't open. Another word to the wise, when you're going to the bathroom, always bring your cell phone with you. Mine was out in the hotel bedroom, just sitting on a table, not being used, along with the takeout food I had ordered that was now quickly growing cold. A third word to the wise, instead of ordering noodles and company and spending your evening alone, consider going out, maybe with a group of clergy friends like Pastor David does. I told myself not to panic. Surely I would be able to get myself out. First, I tried using that little card that says complimentary toiletries available at the front desk. I tried to, to wedge that in there to break the latch. Then I tried the classic woman's move of taking a bobby pin out of my hair. The more I tried, the more overheated I became because, did I mention, the AC wasn't on. And so that bathroom quickly became humid and hot. And soon I was so sweaty, I was sliding in my socks. Maybe I wouldn't make it out. Maybe there was nothing I could do. Jordan wasn't going to be there for 24 more hours, and I did not have my cell phone. So I started banging on the walls to try to get someone to hear me. I pounded away, and then, and then when my hands hurt too much, I took the trash can and I used that to pound away. And I, I stood on top of the toilet to pound at the ceiling. I shouted up at the corners. I cried, help, help me, help. If you have ever had to say those same words as loud as you can, you know that all it does is make you panic more. Help, help. Could anyone hear me? At the time, I was three months pregnant. A pregnancy made all the more precious because we had lost our first one to miscarriage just prior. I did not want to lose this baby. But as my body overheated and, and my face started buzzing and the stress of the entrapment made me sob, I started to wonder if I would lose this one too. Like I could hyperventilate enough and do enough damage to myself, which only made me hyperventilate more. I couldn't calm down. I was trapped. I mean, on some level, I knew I'd be free again, but I didn't know when. We're in a sermon series we're calling Easter in Captivity as a way of honoring how we are all trapped in our homes right now, quarantined due to coronavirus, and though on some level we know we'll be free again, we don't know when. We're in this purgatory kind of state, sheltering in place, sheltering in limbo, unable to plan for the future as we wonder when we'll be free. In this week's scripture passage, we meet a man whose shelter in place was the tombs, caves and graves of dead people, of all things. That's where he was quarantined with his illness. He was held captive by an unclean spirit, trapped, chained hand and foot with heavy irons. And even when he would break free, he still wasn't really free. Night and day, the Bible says, night and day among the tombs 
and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones night and day, meaning he was awake at night, crying at night, cutting himself with stones. And did he say something like, help, help me? Could anyone hear him? Any of us who have found ourselves awake at three in the morning know there is nothing like it. I've heard from a lot of folks that that's been happening to them more lately in, the, in these uncertain days. Any of us who have been afraid in the middle of the night, crying out for help, even if only in our mind, anyone who's been there knows there's nothing like it. Stay there too long and you turn into an animal. Back in the bathroom, I wondered how much time had passed. I could see from my watch, you remember watches, right? Those things that used to not be able to make phone calls. I, I could see from my watch that two hours had passed. Was I going to spend the night in the bathtub? So I turned animal. I didn't just shout, I shouted at the top of my voice, into the corners, down below, up at the air vent in the ceiling. I tried shouting in low pitch, in high pitch, in outright screams. I was begging and begging for help. It wasn't pretty. And I should mention now that I was supposed to play and sing two original songs at our annual conference's final worship service in just a few days' time, but I kept screaming not caring what it was doing to my vocal cords. Every so often I would hear this mechanical whirring sound, perhaps from the elevator, and I would wait for it to subside before yelling, banging again, hoping that whoever had gotten off on that floor would hear me. Please, I said. This man from the tombs, he turned animal. As soon as he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran wild and bowed down before him. It wasn't pretty. And he didn't just talk normally. He shouted at the top of his voice, what did you do, do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Please don't torment me. Please don't send me away. He looks powerless. He looks hopeless. He looks weak. So by the time we get to the happy ending, he overcomes all this, right? He's no longer powerless, hopeless, and weak. No, no, he's, he's dressed and sitting in his right mind. He's talking at a normal volume. His quarantine is over. By the end of the story, he's the perfect picture of strength. Actually, I think he's the picture of strength all along. Because real strength is running up to Jesus as fast as you can, running to him as soon as he gets out of his boat, falling at his feet. Real strength is not caring how wild you look or how unclean your spirit is, but it's just running to Jesus right then, right there. Real strength is having the courage to cry out, to howl even, and show your bruises. What I wish I could tell that man right from the beginning is that God is working something in you. Not just in the healing, but in the begging too. God is making God's presence known, not just in the story's happy ending. God is present in the in-between. God is present in everything that leads up to our breaking point, present when we are at our most animal, when we are feeling our weakest, when we're afraid. Because remember, the Bible's promise is, is that the kingdom of heaven belongs not to the strong, but to the poor in spirit. Blessed aren't those who have it all together, but blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says the Lord is near not to the fearless, the confident, or the anti-fragile. No, it says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. 
and saves the crushed in spirit. God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God's grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So to the widower whose wife died three years ago, and you say you miss her more each day, not less, I want to tell you something. The Lord is near to you. And to the grad student who won't have a graduation ceremony this year and interviewed for a job and got turned down and might have to move in your, with your parents, the Lord is near to you. And to the mother of toddler twins who's watching this video at a playback speed of two so you can squeeze it into the seven minutes of daily alone time you get, God's grace is enough for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. And to the adult son who can't see his mother in her retirement community because of the lockdown and, and feels both lost and relieved because you've just been so tired, God's grace is enough for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And what would I tell my former self, that pregnant woman trapped in the bathroom, that woman begging God, I've lost one already, don't let me lose another. To her, I wanna say, the Lord is near to you. Well, I'm sure by now you're wondering how I got out. I'll spare you the many MacGyver maneuvers I tried first. You can read them all in this incident report I filled out, but I'll skip to the end. I pulled the handicap support bar off the shower wall, wielded it like a machete, and hacked my way through the door. In my defense, at first I only wanted to make a hole big enough to fit my hand through to try to turn the knob from the other side, but when even that failed to open the door, it was game on. I slashed at that door with a strength from beyond, with an animal anger, and finally crawled through the open hole, scratching my skin on the jagged wood along the way, and tumbling to the floor. Now, since Pastor David and I were both there for the same conference, I had used the church credit card to book our rooms, and the front desk clerk had given me room 318 and him room 218. When I told him all about my ordeal after the fact, he said, you know, when I was in my room, I kept hearing this banging for like two hours. I thought it was just construction. Whatever way you are feeling trapped this week, whatever way you are feeling weak and defeated, I want to say that sometimes true strength looks like crying on the floor of the bathroom. Sometimes strength looks not like busting down the door, but like begging God. Real strength looks like singing your songs in worship a few days later belting your heart out with a voice that's gone scratchy now, a voice that can't quite hit the high notes now, but still singing with all your heart. And when your friend, Pastor David, texts you later to ask, how soon are we allowed to laugh about this? Strength looks like laughter at yourself and letting others join in. May we go forth in the strength of God's spirit and always keep our cell phones on us. Amen.